to be around him and watch him with Robin and Janelle and the kids. Al, how are you doing? So sad. Can you turn on the volume? You don't want to. You don't want to debrief it with me. No. So one of Alice and my wife's most guilty pleasures is watching the show Sister Wives, which has been on the air now for ten years, sixteen seasons. And I think my, I think Allison has seen every single episode of every single season. So this show has been a big part of my life for ten years. Also, I've watched a lot of those episodes, and I watch the episodes, and I have pretty strong opinions about how the relationships function. But I kind of sort of take a step back and go, you know what? I'm not part of that of that faith. Uh, you know, I, I don't w live or have any experience in a plural marriage. So I just sort of like, you know, that's, that's how they want to live their lives and it's fine. But this episode today, tonight was a doozy. Christine, who is wife number three, announced that she wanted a divorce. And so just for me, it sort of brought into focus all of the things that I have thought were problematic about those relationships before. And so I, I just want to just react to that. I want to make the caveat that obviously I don't have the experience I don't have experience in plural marriages or working with anybody in a plural marriage. So I'm just going to be able to give you an, the perspective of a psychologist, that a traditional psychologist that looks at these kind of relationships, both good and bad. So first, why do these relationships develop or, or evolve? So certainly there's the religious component and everybody in this relationship has some exposure to a plural marriage and, and sees it and likes what they see and want to engage in it. They feel called to it. But but they also have friends and family members that, that have the same kind of upbringing that don't decide to enter into a plural marriage. So what about these characters, these people, lead them to want to engage in this kind of relationship? So on the part of the women, to me, it looks like they are all starting off from a place of wanting support. One of the beautiful things about Having sister wives, I imagine, is that you have this built-in support system. I mean, I think about all the times that my wife and I have fought when we're watching this show. And my wife goes, I would love to have a sister wife here to tell you, David, how wrong you are. Like, she wants to have, she thinks it'd be great to have three other women tell me that I'm wrong. There's a support system there. Like she's joking, but there is a true support system for these women when they're frustrated with Cody because they can sort of align and go, yeah, he does suck in that way. That's nice. I think it also feels really good to have a community, a built-in community to help you raise your kids. All of these women share the responsibility of raising children. They're very connected to each other's kids and they see them as their kids. I think that that's powerful. But you, so you have to think about it like these women wanted that support. And, and at, at some level, I think that means they were, they were less independent or driven to be independent early on. On the part of Cody, I think he likes, or in, and at the start and now, likes the fact that he's able to take care of a flock. He likes to add value to a lot of people, have lots of kids, and, and really have a huge impact. He likes to be the, sort of the tip of the spear, the top of the family. He likes that hierarchy. So to start, all of these women have de-emphasized themselves, and they have overemphasized the relationship and Cody. They are very deferential, very supportive, very responsive and respectful, all of those things. And, and Cody likes that dynamic. Everybody's happy in that dynamic. But what's happened is if you watch over the last 10 years, these women have become more and more independent, more and more self-empowered. You have to imagine that participating in this show has helped, right? Probably for the first time in their lives, they have a camera crew. They have, they have a team of people around them that is putting them, each of the women, up on a pedestal. What do you want? What do you want to wear? How can we dress you up for this shot? What, right? They're, they have fans in the community that, that go to them and admire them. Like, so I, I think that may have shifted the, the dynamic a little bit. Now these women want to be empowered. They want to be more independent. And Cody is desperately wanting them to feel or to be controlled, to be controllable, he, he I, I am sure if you asked him, do you want to control these women, he would say absolutely not. But if you watch, especially season 16, if you watch the way he is directing the behavior of everybody in the family, it, it feels, you know, if I were just to look at a normal relationship and I 
and the husband acted that way, it would feel to me like like it's it's almost emotionally abusive how restrictive he is and how demanding he is. It's over the top, and I think that he's getting his back up because he's so frustrated that his wives keep pushing back, his kids keep pushing back. And this all centers around COVID. And if you watch this particular season, Cody over-aligns with Robin. So there's wives one through four. Mary is number one. Janelle is number two. Christina is number three. And those three have all sort of pushed back on Cody's rules around COVID. And he's gotten stricter and stricter and stricter. And yet Robin, wife number four, has been very responsive. And so Cody has over-aligned with Robin. So let's talk about, like, why is Robin different than the other three? I think she's newer. I think she's less independent. Cody saved her from a really bad marriage. I think she is super deferential, and she's still in that place. And so Cody is drawn to her. And if you watch season 16, you can see him over a line with Robin and kind of become dismissive of the others. Let me pause there and say that I know it sounds like I'm saying Cody's a massive a-hole and these women don't have a strong enough sense of self or personal identity to differentiate, and that that's some kind of a bad thing, which I don't think is true. I think Cody, I have been very impressed with Cody over the last 10 years in in how aligned he is with his family, how much he cares about his kids. It's his whole life is caring for this family. The way he does it, to me, feels over the top, too intense, right? He wants this sort of this obediency that I don't like, but I don't think he's a bad guy. And I also think that if I look at these women, they seem too deferential to me. I wish they were more independent, right? But that's my view of it. It doesn't mean that they're doing anything wrong. And if you, if you take the, the plural marriage out of it, if you look at anybody's relationship, I can't tell you how frequently I see couples where that, that dynamic exists. You get into a relationship because at the time you, you, you make each other feel better. And as you evolve in your relationship, all of a sudden the things that your partner did for you to make you feel better is no, long, or is no longer needed. And that's how divorces happen. People grow apart. Like the fact that they split up doesn't mean that either one of them was wrong. It, it just means that where they were when they got married is not where they are now. Cody kept doing the same exact thing and treating his wives the same exact way. And they grew and wanted something different. Except for Robin. So all that being said, I'll give you a prediction. Just based on the interactions that I have seen, I would imagine that in the next couple of years, Christine's gone, Mary's gone, and Janelle's gone. I think there's no more plural marriage, and I think it's just Robin and Cody that stay together. That's my guess. Wait, wait, wait. Before you go, I'm starting a new channel, David Colorosi, PhD. The current channel that you're listening to right now is all popular culture reactions. The new channel will be about kind of just the, the psychology side of things, being an executive coach, being a consultant, psychological principles, social psych stuff. I think it'd be really interesting, but a little bit different format. So check it out here. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe.